Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Today, I'm gonna be finally talking about compression and compressors and what do the parameters do and what do compressors do and why is it the most widely used uh, uh, plugin on any multi-track <laughs> recording uh, anywhere all the time. Compression is applied a lot and it's the most used thing. So this is why. Um, so firstly, let's talk about what it does. So what a compressor really is designed to do is two things. It's supposed to bring loud sounds down and quiet sounds up. And hopefully what you end up with is a, a performance that's even but still natural sounding. And that's key because as you compress, it has it, well, what it does is remove the dynamics. So you have to be very careful not to over compress because if you do, you just sort of lose all the natural um, quality to, you know, like a vocal performance is usually very dynamic, you know, it usually comes up a lot in the choruses and sort of settles into a nice midpoint in the verses um, without having to deal with automation and all sorts of stuff like that. You can use a compressor to help, you know, keep that signal nice and smooth as you go through the song. So that's what a compressor does. Now let's just talk about the most basic compressor that GarageBand has, and I'm gonna be using a vocal track as an example. So really quick, let's go down the parameters. Threshold is very simply the point at which the compressor starts working. Um, so I have this track right here, this vocal track is set to zero dB. And so basically if I had this at zero dB, it would mean that everything above zero db would be getting squashed now if i had it you know if i want to make it more dramatic i would bring this down saying so everything above negative 15 db would be sent through the compressor and squashed now the squash how much do you want to squash it that's where the ratio comes in so the ratio the way to read this is uh let me just put it in the middle here so here's a ratio of five to one so for every one dB that you go over your threshold setting, um, you're gonna, the compressor will bring it down five dBs. Or, you know, if I wanna put a lot of it on, for every one dB over, this'll compress it down 19 dB. So that's a quite a high compression rate. Um, you know, and you can bring it down here for sort of a more natural sound. Attack is the next one. Very simply, it is as fast as the compressor will turn on or off or not at all um, so you know if you have things like uh, a drum uh, drums percussion sounds that are actually fast or the attack of its you know the sound itself is very fast you're gonna want a fast attack on it so the compressor grabs onto that sound immediately and releases it things like voices guitars um, you don't want such a fast attack usually uh, you want it to be a little bit more natural sounding Fast attack, you know, has a tendency to, you know, you'll hear it if it's, especially if the ratio is real high. Um, and then the last one is gain, and that's the output from your compressor back to, you know, yourself. Um, so let's talk about these things and play with it a little bit and listen, because one of the big things about compressors is that they do have a tendency to change the tonal qualities of whatever, you know, track you're dealing with. Of course, every compressor has its own, you know, specific sound and, and, and specific, you know, components and things. So every compressor will sound a little different as you change the parameters. But what I'm about to say is pretty much you could use this across the board on any compressor. So as you bring, you know, the threshold number down, what you'll find is you actually end up with a much darker tone. Um, and adversely, as you go high, you get more high end out of it. So let's just listen to that real fast. So I'm just gonna bring this down. I'm gonna bring the ratio up just to sort of for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna to have to turn this up a little bit so we can hear it. Advice. Maybe a little more. Advice with me. Tom doesn't like to wear the clothes I Right. So you should hear, you know, that was sort of a darker sound. Now let me just sort of reverse all this stuff out here, and you should hear. Uh, that it's much brighter. Advice with me. Tom doesn't like to wear the clothes I shrink. Right. So there you can hear there was a lot more of like sort of the, the throat sound, a lot more syllabants, 
syllabants, is that the word? Um, <laughs> but you can hear a lot more of like the S's and the T's and things. The more you compress, the more you lose those elements of the sound. So be very careful with compression. Um, you know, the things, like I was saying, you know, on uh, drums, you want a fast attack. Guitars, vocals, you want probably closer to a medium attack. And I always say it, experiment, 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 especially with this particular compressor in GarageBand. This is a real no-brainer, and they've listed it in an order in which you should work. Everybody, every engineer says, oh, I have my method. But with compression, it's one of those things where you want to start with the threshold and then move to the ratio attack and the gain um, as you, you know, go through the list. Of course, you're probably going to be going back and forth and working with it, but threshold is definitely the place to start. Um, now, one other thing I want to talk about is there's another compressor available uh, through IK Multimedia, and it is hands down one of my favorite compressors, and I just wanted to show it to you really quickly. Um, it's out of their T-Rex 3 package, but you can buy this individually. Uh, it's called the, Cla uh, the Classic Compressor, and uh, God, it's so great. If you're going to just go over to IK Multimedia and buy one plug-in for GarageBand or whatever you're using. This particular compressor is my favorite and mostly it's the stereo enhancement knob. I love this knob. Um, <laughs> does that sound as weird as I think it does? I love this knob. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, the stereo enhancement knob on here is a really beautiful thing, especially for guitar tracks, vocal tracks, anything where you sort of really want to open up the stereo image and make it a lot more present, <clears throat> this stereo enhancement knob is great. But also, this compressor is very transparent, meaning that you can really hit this thing as hard as you want, almost as hard as you want, and it's, it's invisible. It does the job you want it to do, but you don't get that fatiguing sound in your ear. You don't hear the compressor working, but it is, in fact, working. Um, and it's a really great one that I definitely um, recommend you guys buy. I love this thing. You know, in the end, why we use compression, compression in general is to help things fit into the mix properly. If you don't use compression at all, say, um, you know, things will spill over into each other sonically and you just end up with a, a mix where like nothing inside of it is well defined everything's just sort of blah, 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 garbly gookity combined you know so like guitar tones bleed into uh bass tones and, and things like that and that's just not what you want you know you really want everything to be semi-departmentalized in a mix and that's what the compressor does is it help everything sort of go into its little cubicle or whatever <laughs> or its little slice of the pie um <laughs> <laughs> whatever your mental image is. Um, that's what a compressor does. It helps, you know, these pieces of the puzzle fit better when you put them all together in a mix. So that is pretty much it, you guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. As always, please sign my mailing list. I'm giving away free stuff and there's actually going to be a bunch of uh, high-end advanced lessons coming out. I'm working on those videos now and uh, there's going to be a secret website set up and everything. So you got to get on the mailing list to do that. There's a link below to do that. Um, that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave comments below and I will answer. All right, later.